Ladies and gentlemen, I told you I had a very special guest here with me today on I'm Just Saying Live. I've got my boy Sergio in the building over there looking like a snack. What's up? How you doing today? I'm doing good. Beautiful. How you feeling? I am doing super good, especially after attending that listening party last night. We had a really good intimate time, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. It was the great, it was a great mix of people. Tell us a little bit about the party and why you decided to come to Texas with that. Yeah, like honestly, I had never been out here to celebrate my music before. And okay. um, Latoria, she reached out to me and she said, yo, we have to make this happen. I'm like, well, I'm pulling up. And we came out here and then she brought all these wonderful people from all over Houston and they came to celebrate my album. And honestly, I'm still on a high from last night. <laughs> we, we, we were leaving and I just told her, I was like, I just feel so full. You know, I just That's felt, good. I felt people really appreciating my gifts and my music and my talent. And I was just really, really excited to be able to tell y'all the stories about the songs and just sing the songs with you guys and it just felt so right so last night was just a vibe it was a movie it was just honestly it's one of my career highlights it did it definitely felt good and before we get all into the music and before I let everybody know where we're going with this thing because it really and truly was amazing it was something you know I had not heard in a minute and I was waiting for R&B to come back and he did it y'all I'm just gonna say that I'm gonna say I, I listened to everything and I was super happy this is a super dope project but Thanks. let's talk a little bit about the man behind the music if you will yeah. who That's is Sergio Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, Sergio is a Chicago born creative. You know, I've always been very, very attracted to creating and songwriting and singing. And I went through a lot, you know, as a child on the South side of Chicago, then growing up and then my mother, she moved us to the North side before I moved to Atlanta. And I am a, a man of integrity, you know, of honesty. I'm a very driven guy, very disciplined, disciplined is like my superpower. A lot of people, because, okay. um, you know, I, the way I eat and the way I, just how I just do anything, working out, everything, I'm very, very disciplined. So, um, you know, Sergio is a person that just tries to create content for lovers and people that, you know, that really, really go through things that I go through, because I went through a lot of different things. So, the music is definitely very relatable. Uh, I shared a story yesterday with, with the group uh, about my life and how uh, one of his songs related to me, but y'all can't see yeah. that yet. Look, y'all y'all got to check that out in the recap or go to the social media. Um, I want yeah. people also to know he's all over social media. He's on every single streaming music platform out yeah. there. He's on YouTube. The visuals are lit as well. You know, I like to do my research. So I went and did a peek at everything. Thing, you know, yeah. we saw little snippets of things yesterday, but uh, I, w I went and looked at everything. I've definitely shared some things with friends and family Thank already. So that part. Um, I appreciate you for real. Let's say this about the man. Now, inside of this, ladies and gentlemen, I heard tons of breakup songs. They sounded very strong, but there are lots of breakups. Were we breaking yeah. up to make up? What were we doing? Exactly. Here? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, like I, I so what? Well, when I create an album, I try to give myself space and time to experience different things. And in particular with this album, I had gotten out of a relationship that had lasted for quite a while. And this album was real cathartic in, in the form that I was just single. I was just in a lot of different situationships. But, you know, we find ourselves in a lot of different situationships when we're trying to find ourselves again. And I experienced love, love that only lasted some nights. Okay. Sometimes it was a couple of months. Sometimes, you know, it was not even a love that was all of mine. You know, when I talk about like, we leave him where I found out that I'm a side dude. So I think that I gave myself the clearance to just experience love in any form or capacity. All the different ways that it comes at you. And yeah, so, yeah. so ladies and gentlemen, if you do not know, or you have not heard of Sergio, uh, this last album is before it's too late okay uh, he wanted to make sure that y'all know that sometimes we get on the bandwagon it's too late y'all better wake up start realizing how you feel about these people get it out there and either it is real or it ain't look so oh go ahead no i was just saying like time is like running out you know what i mean so 
I'm, I love the album title because it has so many different meanings. And like you said, it's before it's too late, they need to listen to my album and check me out. Yes, before it's too late. I made sure I put that on all my posts. So we did the listening party, but this is Mental Health Awareness Month. So yeah. we've got these relationships, whether they're on a high note or whether on the lowest of low. How do you yeah. keep yourself sane? Because we know the music industry can get hectic. You've talked a little bit about your migration, if you will, from yeah. Chicago to Atlanta to Cali now, right? Aren't you in California? Exactly, LA. Yeah, in LA. All right. So yeah, like, I know that those are those places are, you know, those, yeah. there's some differences in there. You had to adapt to those areas. So yeah. talk about kind of your mental headspace and how you stay strong in that. Um, you know, for me, it's important to to have a lot of time for myself, because when I do that, I'm able to recharge and kind of reflect on just different parts of myself. So when I moved from Atlanta, I had been there for quite a while since I was 18. I had moved, I had lived there, and then I was able to kind of scope my sound and build a fan base. And then I stepped out on faith and moved to Los Angeles. And even then, I, I moved out there a month before the pandemic hit. Oh, wow. So I had nothing, right, yeah, nothing but time to just be in my own thoughts. And I decided to take that as a journey for me to get closer to myself, to figure out who I was at that time and who I wanted to be. And, you know, I do a lot of things. I did a lot of at home work, workouts, you know, fitness is very important for me when I'm in the gym or even when I'm doing cardio outside, I'm able to kind of block out the world and just focus and just kind of treat myself in that way. Because to me, being healthy is very important. And everybody and, feels better mentally when they look good. I, I, you know, exactly. I, I just have to say that when your body is together and you think you popping your hair looking right, you know, you just feel <laughs> like you're on a thousand all the time. Exactly. So I can definitely yeah. look to that. Yeah, I had to get that feeling, you know, to me, that feeling was so important because honestly, like it was such a dark time for the world, but mm -hmm. it was important for us to know that it wouldn't last forever. So, you know, mental health is something that my family, like certain pe people in my family would have, have struggled with. So to mm -hmm. me, it was important for me to like, I use that time to learn how to express myself better. Okay. Tell people how I felt, tell people how, what I didn't like, what I, what I liked. Um, it didn't matter if he was a friend, if he was somebody that I was dealing with on a romantic level or my family. I learned to express myself because I realized how important it was to get things out rather than bottle them up. So, oh, okay. yeah, like and, and that kind of helped me free thoughts that I may have been experiencing or feeling mm -hmm. like just getting it out. It's important to just kind of purge, you know, like tell people what you feel. Well, the emotion is definitely in the music and I've really, really enjoyed the project, but this Thank is you. not your first project. Uh, no. While we're talking about migrations and, you know, kind of the growth of your art and learning to express yourselves, what do you think is kind of different between that first album and this one? So this is my third, actually. Mm -hmm. So my first album is more, I feel that on the album, I feel that I was in pursuit of something. Okay. And when I was in pursuit of something, I don't think that I was in pursuit of myself. I think I was in, in pursuit of a like acceptance. I wanted people to just, I wanted the world to just let me in. Okay. And I, and that was really a, a weird time because I don't know when I ever adopted that idea because I've always been a person that kind of marched to the beat of my own drum. Right. Uh, yeah, but, but I feel like, that. like like just like Erica Badu says, she's sensitive yeah. about her stuff. It's kind of exactly. like when you start putting yourself out there in front of the world, it's like, all right, y'all need to applaud because I know yeah. I'm great. And no, yeah. when it doesn't come when you expect it yeah. or how you expect it, yeah. it changes everything it's up. Right. And you're like, now wait a minute. <laughs> I'm still looking for some applause over here. Let me just say it. Exactly. <laughs> no, for real. And I feel that I was looking for that, whatever, but I think that by the time I made it to This Will Hurt, which is my second album, I think there was a level of, like, there was confidence. Okay. And it was it was me understanding that I had to accept me before okay. anybody else could. I had to know and tell myself that I'm good enough and that what I have to offer is is well, well enough. You know what I mean? So um, I, with, with This Will Hurt, I really began to create music that was of my sound and truly my experiences. And I wasn't trying to appeal to anybody else. Okay. And now that I'm here at this third one, I'm really at that level because I'm at the highest level because now I'm just making music yeah. off of how I feel. Okay. And, 
and just putting it out there and letting everybody else decide what it feels like for them. Because there's records on my album like Clothes On where people may feel this sexual. But for me, it wasn't that. It was me talking about my vulnerability and me just talking about how hard it was for me to express myself. Like I just told you that I went on that journey, learn how to express myself. So Clothes On is just coming as you are, you know, removing all those layers of baggage and things that you've gone through and just stepping into owning what you feel and being able to know that it's okay for you to feel that way and tell somebody how you feel. So yeah, like, it's been such a journey between the first album to now. And I'm just happy that I had the first album to get out my system to get to this level, to be able yeah, to make to have it. something to compare the growth to. Yeah. You know? um, I've come far. When we talk about the art of this, you know, you were just yeah. saying that, you know, you felt like you were expressing it the way you want to. I know that you included, you know, some friends of yours yeah. to play these instruments. So y'all, yeah. the vocals are amazing Thank and you. the instruments, you know, because a lot of people don't take time anymore. Everybody beats sounding the same. Everybody's thing. Yeah. But like, I'm one of those people, like I go to Zydeco's all the time. I like to go listen to live music and the guitar is always like one of my favorite thing. I love a good bass, yeah. you know? So it's all through here, man. Um, yeah. I think, uh, which is the, I think it's Trap that I really, really I'm like. So, yeah. that, that, you know, it kind of highlights uh, your yeah. guitar. So uh, tell us a little bit about that and those in that relationship. Yeah, like I, I thought that the album needed that because to me, I've always appreciated the guitar. I've always appreciated what the guitar made me feel like. And I, I felt that on this journey while creating this album, that it wouldn't be complete unless I had that guitar sound. So I enlisted my little brother. He's my frat brother, but I call him my little brother. I enlisted Brian Johnson to come along with me and my producer, DJ Cool. And we basically crafted each, each song from the bottom up. And there's just so much guitar element because that's the space that I've been in. And he was able to listen to what I would, I would sing the notes to him and the, the chords and the melodies. And he was able to embody everything that I was singing to him. Well, it, and, sound, it sounds amazing. It worked out for you. <laughs> it, def you. it definitely worked out. Um, you know, uh, when we're talking about the art also, and we're talking about writing, uh, yeah. let's talk about, you know, the writing and putting these things down and getting yeah. it to you because you just talked about, you know, telling him one thing and he yeah. you know, correlated because you guys know each other. Talk exactly. about the writing of some of these songs. Uh, one of the one, one of the ones that I really liked was energy. Uh, I'm a high energy. I'm a high energy woman, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> and so. So I was like, oh, you know what? Ooh, I like the way he put that. So I'm sure yeah. a lot of women will feel like they can relate to this. Exactly. Yeah, I, I wrote every song on the project and I don't write like a typical writer. Okay. Like, I write things down. I freestyle. So when we created the production behind the music, I tell my producer, DJ Cool, I tell him to press record. Okay. And then I just and I just go and I create the song. So like um, energy was important for me because as I've reached this new chapter in my life, whatever, there's a certain level of confidence that I've that I've been able to encompass now. And I think that women appreciate that. They love a man who knows who they are, knows how to approach them and just knows how to just stand in firm in what they believe in. So energy, a lot of women talk about big blank energy. And that's what that song is about is just bringing that big blank energy, you know what I mean? Bringing it to the forefront and just kind of coming at you with it. And I wanted to start the project off like that confident because it's a new me, it's a new era, it's a new sound. So I'm introducing this new version of me and I got to come with it. And I came with it with energy. You definitely came with the energy <laughs> on that one. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are just tuning in, we are here live with Sergio on, I'm just <laughs> saying live. Tell everybody where they can follow you on social yeah. media. Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Sergio, that's S-I-E-R-G-I-O. And you can find me on Facebook, Sergio Fan. That's S-I-E-R-G-I-O fan. TikTok. Okay. TikTok is Sergio with two eyes. Okay. It's S-I-E-R-G-I-O <laughs> with two eyes, like T-W-O-E-Y-E-S. Okay. And my music is everywhere. Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, Pandora, of SoundCloud, Audio. I'm going to tell y'all, you definitely do not want to sleep on this project. It is amazing. We are here right now and we are talking about Before It's Too Late. So definitely go check it out, Before It's Too Late. Um, I want to talk about also, before we get off here, because we talked about the vocals, yeah. we talked about the instruments, 
Um, I know that you have worked with several industry legends as well, you know, because uh, on this show, we do a lot of small business highlights and trying yeah. to get people to the next level. If they do make it and they sign that contract and they're yeah. able to go open up for some of these big people, what yeah. would you tell the people that are kind of following in behind your footstep in regards to working with big name legends? Because you've worked yeah. with some pretty big names in the industry. Yeah, I, I would tell them to that do not feel that you're smaller than that person. Okay. I think that I've been fortunate enough to be in the room in the space with legends and for them to make me feel just as big legendary. as they are. Yeah. yeah, just legendary, just because they see so much of me or my potential in me as well. They see the future. And I think that anybody that's up and coming, they should just walk in owning who they are so that nobody chips away at their confidence and things like that. It's just so important to walk into a space like you're supposed to be there. Walk into the room and make, and you are the room. You own know? it. Yeah, own it. I pride myself to walking into any space like I belong to be there. Even if I sneak in there, I deserve to be in there and I'm supposed to be in there because God got me there. And it's just about standing in your light, illuminating as bright as you can and sharing that light with other people because at the end of the day, whatever you could light, a thousand candles with just one. So to me, it's all about just standing in that and just being able to just be as big as you are. You know what I mean? You are big as your ma imagination. Okay, fill up the room. Now we were over at Iconic Studios, ladies and gentlemen. We got to give them a huge round of applause uh, yeah. before we, you know, try to dwindle this thing down. I also want to talk about support having the right people in your corner. Talk yeah. to us a little bit about, you know, the support that you have around you. I yeah. did also uh, pop up a picture earlier of a friend of yours that you said was very close to you. So tell us a little bit about that relationship and kind of managing it over the years, because, you know, keeping those relationships of people who believe in you is really, really important. It's very important. You know, when I've been out here, I've been, like I said, I've been with Latoria. Latoria has been a friend of mine for a very, very long time. She's a sister to me. And she's also somebody that believes in my talent. It was important for me to come out here to Houston because she, everybody knows her in Houston. Everybody respects her in Houston. And she knows what I have to offer is essential for Houstonians. And I, I'm just grateful for that. But you need somebody like her who believes in you and even sees vision that you can't see. Because honestly, in my mind, I was just like, you know, Houston, they don't want anything to do with me. And it was a <laughs> Which is I, not on that R&B tip yet. Yeah, I'm like, you know, there they, are people here who are, but I'm actually yeah. from Dallas, so maybe, yeah. you know. <laughs> exactly. And you were there, you was going hard. So it's like, it's a Texas thing, whatever. I, I'm learning, you know, Texas people, like they really love what they love. And, and R&B is one of those things. So it was able to change my mind. And Justin, you saw Justin, he's been on my team forever. Like I, I told you guys at the listening session, he had been there from, from the beginning and just helped me birthed my sound and just birthed my confidence on stage and just really was instrumental in telling me, yo, you got to make this a career, bro. You and, have to have somebody yeah. in your corner that you can trust, that you know yeah. is not going to, you know, just be feeding you anything exactly. because it's benefiting them at the time. Exactly. Right. right. So yeah. where have you found your biggest fan base to be? I know you were talking a little bit about, you know, out, the people outside of the country kind of oh, yeah. latching onto your music at this time. So tell me a little bit about how that's been kind of spread into different areas. Yeah, like my music has been making, I'm very shocked. I mean, maybe I shouldn't be shocked, but it's just, <laughs> you know, but I'm just like, yo, like they are loving my music in Paris and like London. And like, I got crazy amount of fans like uh, in, um, in what is that city called? Where, where um, in Russia. Russia, oh. like I might one of my songs was charting in Russia. I'm like, what the heck? You were like, who's yeah. listening to me in Russia? Exactly. <laughs> and, and I get the reports as well. Like, so like I got in Africa, like they're going hard in Africa. Um, and so one of my things is definitely, you know, I'm always telling people this, do not limit yourself uh, yeah. to the arena that you jump in because ladies and gentlemen, if people like you. Yeah. Or they decide to fall in love with the person, you know, behind the thing. And that's why we're getting to know him. Once yeah. they fall in love with who you are, hey, it, it doesn't matter what you put out. If you've right. got those vocals and all the rest of those things in place, it'll take off just like that. And I'm yeah. happy yours has been taking off. So that's cool to be all over the world like that. Um, I hope yeah. that you keep growing. Let me Appreciate see. I got, I got some, a few more little things here that I was yeah. going to try to get out. Um, when it comes time for you and these relationships now, 
Because the people haven't heard the music yet. I'm going to do this before. I'm going to talk about these relationships and situationships before we even get into it. Because there was, um, can I take you out? We know that women love to dress up, be taken out and seen with their guy when that's who they want to be with. Like that is a thing. Okay. You need to, you got to get outside, you know? (laughs) They want to get outside. They want to be showed around. Okay, and that's what so. that record, like, yeah, you know, that record was so important for me because it's my responsibility as a man to basically re-implement the idea that dating is important. Okay. Women like to be treated. They like to be celebrated and they like to be shown off. And I'm not saying that I possess you because I don't believe that people possess people. But mm-hmm. I do believe there is a certain level of pride that women like to be a part of, you know what I mean? Like, just to be like, you know, this is mine. This is my baby. You know what I mean? This yeah. is... This is who I love. This is who I go home to. This is who I, I, you know. I don't have to be scared to go out in public with you. (laughs) Exactly. So take you out is that record. Like, it's just like all about that. It's like, yo, we going out tonight. I want you to wear that outfit that I like that shows your body. You know what I mean? That FM dress. Put that FM dress on. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. But even, even if you want to stay at home and you want to invite some friends, I still want people to know that we are together. And that's what take you out is. It feels good. It feels like, you know, it just feels sexy. It feels grown up, but it feels fun as well. And I think we need that after these two years we've had. Yeah, I think that this was a fun album. Um, I'm not going to say, you know, because some of them you can only, it's only bedroom or it's only yeah. ride music. This yeah. is something that had all of the different pieces in it. Um, mm-hmm. I know the industry likes to compare people and I yeah. want the listeners to know um, if somebody had to compare your sound to someone, what would they be uh, getting when they listen to this album? This album, I'll definitely say that you can compare it to, and I love the people that I'm about to list. So even the comparisons, they're compliments for me. I, I, I remember the time when I hated comparisons, you know what I mean? Okay, right, every, every artist does because you want to stand up, stand alone and be exactly. your own thing, but people still do it. Exactly. <laughs> Always do it regardless. Yeah, but I, I, I say that it's definitely, I, you can compare it to um, Miguel, you can compare okay. it to Ro James, you can compare it to Lucky Day. I think that those are, even Chris Brown, there's some Chris Brown ele- elements in there. And I think that like, those are all people that I love. You know okay. what I mean? I love Lucky Day. Like I, I'm a huge fan of Lucky Day. I'm a huge fan of uh, Miguel, like I remember the first time I heard "Sure Thing," and I just hey, been ever since. I still, I still got it on the playlist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you, like he just got classics, you know, adorned. You know what I mean? Like that to be compared to those people from my fans, just new people who've discovered me, is is just such a compliment. And I'm, I feel blessed to be in a conversation with those guys because I grew up essentially listening to them, or even now as with us being peers in a lot of ways, like I'm inspired by everything they have got, they have going on and I would love to go on tour with them, open up for them and just be a part of anything they have going on because I respect them as men, creatives, vocalists, musicians. I just love them. All right. So Sergio, do you have anything um, big coming up that you want to tell people that they need to be a part of? Yes. I need everybody to come out tonight. Yes! <laughs> I'm going to be performing at the Greasy Spoon, the Pearl in location. I'm going to be performing songs from this new album, Before It's Too Late. It's going to be full of vibes, full of vocals, full of a lot of different feels. And I just want everybody out there, if you're available tonight at 8 o'clock, to pull up. I'm going to be hitting the stage around 8, 10, 8, 15. So it's going to be a vibe. Come out there and get you some food. But more than anything, catch this vibe, the Sergio vibe. Sergio vibe. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, um, we are going to, you know, I like to do listening parties, ladies and gentlemen. So he is going to introduce a song. Tell us a little bit about it before you yeah. get into it. And then we're going to go. So tell them one more time where they can follow you on social media. Yeah, you guys can follow me on Instagram, Twitter on TikTok at Sergio, that's Mm S-I-E-R-G-I-O. And you can find me on TikTok, Sergio with two eyes. Sergio on Facebook. Well, thank you so much for being on I'm Just Saying Live today. Now tell us a little bit about this song that you want us to play next. Yeah, this next song that we're about to play is Complicated. And Complicated is a very, very personal record for me. Um, Just falling in love with somebody and deciding to walk away from them and then feeling like, damn, did I let them get away? 
there's those feelings, you know, those last minute thoughts that you have that you that they may not know. So even if they've moved on, this is that record that kind of expresses what you feel. And it, it, no matter how complicated it is, you know, the feelings they stand. So this is a feel good record inspired by Aaliyah, inspired by Timbaland inspired by genuine there's a lot of different elements on the record but more than anything the element of honesty is on there and i think it takes a lot for a man or humans to tell somebody where you feel what you feel and where you're standing so this is my way of saying hey i love you you always gonna be the one for me and i need you but and i you understand definitely know that that on. gets complicated sometimes exactly. <laughs> exactly so that's complicated produced by dj cool all right, ladies and gentlemen, this is complicated. Yeah.